So, this is the cardiovascular system, and this is the first video of histology 2. Let's get to it. So, first up, when we talk about the cardiovascular system, there are two terms we commonly hear. The term systemic circulation and pulmonary circulation. Well, the, the purpose of the systemic circulation is to provide nutrients and oxygen to the tissues and organs, generally in the whole human body. The pulmonary circulation actually aims at reoxygenating the blood and getting rid of the carbon dioxide uh, from the cells, from the byproduct of the cell. There is a common mistake that students make in this case, is that, and that is to assume that the pulmonary vein actually contains deoxygenated blood, which is not true. This has to do with the definition of an artery in the vein. Artery is defined as any vessel that comes uh, from the heart to the goes from the heart to the tissues, and vein is any vessel that actually brings uh, blood from the tissue to the heart. So in this case, the pulmonary artery in this case will actually contain deoxygenated blood and the pulmonary veins will, will contain the oxygenated blood. So it, that's important to remember. Now we should focus on the term vessels and generally the general structure of the vessels. Well, vessel can refer to, uh, the term vessel can refer to either artery, vein, lymphatic, and many other, uh, the, I mean the vessels that contain uh, blood. So let's talk about, about the general structure and the common characteristics of all the veins and the arteries, and then we're going to go on to, to discuss about the differences of the two. So. Uh, there are three layers, and they're actually called tunicas. This is again the term, the term is Latin, that means also layer. So first we're going to start from the outer to the inner. So the outer layer is the tunica adventitia. The tunica adventitia is nothing more than just an aggregation of, uh, of, col of connective tissue, collagen fibers, uh, also containing fibroblasts. Many, many times they contain also adipocytes. So uh, this is nothing more than just a supportive small uh, tunic, a supportive small uh, layer. Then we have the tunica media. Now this is one of the most important parts of the vessel. Why? Because this, this layer is filled with uh, smooth muscle layers, smooth muscle cells, and actually many layers of them, many, many, many layers of them. Along, of course, with these uh, smooth muscles, also contain elastic fibers, reticular fibers, and other components that are very, very important for the proper function of the uh, vessel. We're going to see how the tunica media actually is responsible for uh, indirectly controlling the diffusion, indirectly, indirectly controlling the uh, rates of um, vascular constriction, vasoconstriction, and vasodilation. And we'll see how actually this happens and what, is the, what are the consequences of this vasoconstriction and the vasodilation. But nonetheless, the, vas the vascular tone, this is exactly the layer that actually, that mean, that this is the layer that refers to the vascular tone. Uh, and lastly, we have the tunica intima. The tunica intima is a layer that actually covers the whole innermost part of the vessel it is in constant contact with the blood, and it has specific and unique functions. First of all, here we meet the term endothelium. This is a, nothing more than just a simple squamous epithelium. Of course, we've said before many, many times that when a term, when a, when a cell has a specific term in some location, this typically means that they have one more unique function or some other structure or something unique about, the, about this uh, structure. In this case, let's focus on the endothelium. The endothelium has many functions. Uh, one of them is to control the formation or inhibition of blood clot. So in this case, in a, in a healthy vessel, typically the, one of the typical functions is to prevent blood from clotting. And this, is, uh, this actually is achieved through the production of many different, uh, many different molecules. For example, heparin, a typical antithrombogenic uh, agent. So also PGI2, this is a prostaglandin. This is a very large family of the eicosanoid lipids that actually again prevents the specific one, the specific subcategory, prevents blood clotting from occurring. But of course, the endothelium also plays a role in the formation of the clot. And this has to do with the uh, specific granules that the, this simple, simple, the simple squamous epithelia also produce. The endothelium, for example, produces these Weibel palade bodies. Now, these bodies contain inside of them two different molecules. Uh, one of them is the von, Bille, von Willebrand factor and the selectins. Of course, the von Willebrand factor you'll see also in the physiology and also in uh, further on in more medical courses that this is a very, very important factor when it comes to formation and maintenance of the blood clot. So to keep in mind that this simple squamous epithelium, the endothelium, is responsible for both the formation of the clot and also the, uh, for the prevention of the clot forming. Now, uh, furthermore, we have the, these endothelia actually control the vascular tone directly and indirectly. One of the ways that we control the vascular tone is through the endothelium. Well, because the endothelium can actually produce 
For example, nitric, nitrous oxide. Nitric oxide, this is a molecule that actually induces the relaxation of the smooth muscles. Uh, to, start to understand how the relaxation works, whenever we have the smooth muscle relaxed, the whole layer, the whole diameter of the vessel is open, and this is a, a, a state of vasodilation. Whenever we have the vessel that is constricted, the smooth muscles are activated and actively contracted, then we have the shrinking of the diameter of the vessel, and of course this is the event of the vasoconstriction. Now, uh, the vasoconstriction and the vasodilation play roles uh, directly and indirectly into diffusion and to the uh, proper functional form function of the cardiovascular system. Meaning what? For example, whenever we have a vasoconstriction, the, that means that the local blood pressure is going to be increased. This is because we have the same volume of blood in the same specific tube and the diameter shrinks. So as a consequence, the content of this tube, in this case the vessel, is going to have increased blood pressure. And exactly vice versa. Whenever we have a vasodilated vessel, the, the same volume of blood is in a bigger diameter, big, the diameter of a tube of a bigger diameter, and as a consequence the pressure drops. So the, the vasoconstriction and vasodilation also play a role into the blood pressure, of course. Uh, another, another way that we actually uh, should discuss, another way we should view the vasoconstriction and vasodilation is the amount of diffusion, is the quality of diffusion, let's call it better. In the case of a vasodilated vessel, there is a higher amount of diffusion from the blood to the vessel, which from the blood, sorry, to the interstitial tissue, and exactly vice versa. A vasoconstricted tissue, a vasoconstricted, uh, vasoconstricted vessel has, has reduced amount of diffusion towards the uh, interstitial fluid and interstitial tissues. Now, let's go to see another function of the intima. It is, this is the function of the inflammation. Before I mention these bodies, we will palate bodies, and I mentioned about the von Willebrand factor and the P-selectins. Now, the selectins are molecules, we're going to see these molecules way more in detail when we go to the immunology video next up. And, uh, of course, these P-selectins play a major role into the form in the, this event called diapedesis. What is diapedesis? Diapedesis is the movement of, the white, of any white blood cell from the lumen of the vessel lumen of course is we call the whole inner part of the vessel either that be vein or artery or whatever it is the hollow space of a specific organ so if from the lumen we have the diapedesis the movement of the procedure the process of moving from the, the white blood cell from the lumen to the interstitial tissue for example let's assume we have a pathogen somewhere inside this part of the organ okay and of course after the whole inflammatory markings and the pro-inflammatory pro um, signals and so the chemokines and cytokines, we'll discuss of course these things in the video immunology in way more detail, but after all of this, uh, the stimuli, we're going to have the movement from, of the white blood cells from the, heart, from the uh, vessel to the specific location, and this procedure is called diapedesis. Now, and one of the most also important functions of the intima is that it actually induces vasculogenesis and angiogenesis. What is the difference? First of all, vascular typically terms, this is the, the term that actually indicates the vessel. And the angio typically uh, uh, deferred it, and like means the term that is the artery. So, uh, vessel again. So, the vasculogenesis is typically used, this term is typically used to talk about the beginning in the, from the, the beginning differentiation in the, in the embryonal uh, stages and the embryo, embryonal uh, mesenchyme to give rise to the vessel. Now, in the angiogenesis, this typically happens in adulthood or after a repair, after after an injury, after after of course the embryonal phases. Now, this is the procedure of forming a vessel uh, from an existing vessel, either due to injury or either due to ischemic conditions. Ischemic means low amount of uh, oxygen in the area or low amount of nutrients in the area. So, whenever there's a need for excess uh, excess uh, provision of nutrients and oxygen. There's typically this this in this growth factors. One of the most important is the vascular endothelial growth factor. So to sum up, the end of the tunica intima is responsible for the formation and inhibition of blood clots through the different molecules that it produces. It plays a major role in the vascular tone, meaning it controls directly and indirectly the tunica media, of course the smooth muscles, indu inducing either vasoconstriction or vasodilation, also plays a major role in the immunological function of the human body through the diapedesis, through the inflammatory markings and inflammatory procedures, allowing white blood cells to go from the blood to the specific uh, harmed 
uh, area. And lastly, it plays a role, of course, in the formation of new or uh, to repair a specific vessel along with the help of, of course, many other uh, cells. So let's talk about another differences between these tunicas in veins and in arteries. Typically speaking, arteries uh, contain high, a way higher amount of blood, uh, uh, sorry, way more uh, amount of blood in pressure, pressured blood. In this case, of course, this means that the tunica media is way more big and way more thick and way more prominent than uh, that of the tunica intima in veins. And this is because we need to maintain the blood pressure in the arteries high as high as possible. Of course, it doesn't mean that the higher the better. Of course, I'm just talking about the difference between the arterial uh, blood and the vein, the venial blood. The arterial blood should always be higher than the veins. We'll discuss in a bit why this is the uh, very, very important necessity. It actually serves uh, serves the fact that uh, serves the fact of diffusion and the hydrostatic pressure. We discussed in previous in connective tissue uh, in the connective tissue lab video that we have the, the diffusion and the provision of nutrients from the blood to the tissues is, uh, is dependent on the hydrostatic pressure. And this is again the pressure that the blood exerts towards the vessel. This is typically of the, one of the most important uh, contents and one of the most important factors in the hydrostatic pressure is water and the pressure, of course, the high blood pressure. So of course, we need high blood pressure to have the, all of the nutrients in the oxygen be pushed towards the interstitial fluid and the, osmo the osmotic pressure is the one that actually drains back the byproducts and so on and so on from the uh, vein. So, of course, because of this uh, balance, there has, to be, there has to be this balance of increased hydrostatic pressure over osmotic pressure. So, this is important that the arteries contain higher amount of higher pressure within their lumen than, of course, the veins. And this is why we have the tunica media thicker in the arteries rather than in the veins, because it is one of the major uh, functions of the artery to maintain the blood in high blood pressure. So um, important to mention also the tunica media contains, as I said before, elastic fibers along with other fibers. Uh, this is important. Why? Because we need to maintain uh, the, the diameter somehow constant because we have the pulsating, this continuous pulsating uh, system of the, in the cardiovascular system. The artery cannot be continuously uh, open or continuously closed. This has to have, we have to have a pulsating motion to keep the pressure up and to keep the pressure going in a specific uh, value. So in order to uh, facilitate the vasodilation or in the arteries, of course, we need to have them, of course, the intimas and many other neural signs and so on. But mechanically speaking, we need to have uh, uh, two mechanisms to allow for both the distension and the constriction of the vessel. Well, the constriction of the vessel is easy because we have the smooth, uh, smooth muscle cells that actually, whenever they constrict, they're activated and they induce this constriction. But the dilation, the vasodilation, of course, has to be allowed. In this case, the elastic fibers of the tunica media are the ones that are responsible and uh, that allow both the opening and the restoring of the diameter of the vessel back to its original size and shape. So this is one of the most big, most prominent differences between the arteries and the veins. Another one is that the tunica uh, adventitia, or tunica externa, is actually way less, uh, way less prominent in the arteries and way thicker and way bigger in the veins. And this has to do with the amount of uh, this is this is just and that has to do with the amount of collagen fibers and adipose cells surrounding in the tunica adventitia. Now the tunica adventitia as I said before is nothing more than just an aggregation of connective tissue with along with fibro with fibrocytes and fibroblasts and of course a high amount of adipocytes. Of course we have the gradual uh, this is this is classification right here that we see in front of this picture this has to do with the uh, classification based on the size. Uh, there is a classification based on size that the largest uh, vein arteries in the human body are called elastic, exactly in the moderate ones is the muscular, exactly after this the arterial, capillary, then venue, then medium-sized vein, and then large vein. And again, uh, there are where you mentioned two differences. The tunica media is way larger in the artery, and the tunica adventitia is way larger in the veins than in the arteries. Another important difference is that we find valves in the veins. And this is because 
As I mentioned before, the veins control, contain low pressured blood within their lumen. So it is important to prevent backflow. What is backflow? For example, in the veins in our legs, there is because of the gravity and because of way more forces that typically tend to maintain and to tend to pull the blood down and to maintain it in the lower position. Uh, of course, the human body has to have a, a resistance form and some way to, comp to compensate for this, uh, let's say, tense tendency to backflow. So we have the valves which open up whenever blood passes through and exactly after this pulsation of, the, of this pulsatile motion of the blood, the valve closes back up and prevents the blood from going back to its original uh, location. And this is exactly what we call backflow. And to prevent backflow, we have valves in the veins. So let's go into a bit, a bit more detail uh, and let's actually visualize just a bit how, what is actually inside this large, the elastic artery. Elastic artery typically are the arteries that are the largest ones in the human body. For example, the aorta is, the, it was, is considered to be an elastic artery. So we said before that in the beginning we have the elastic, the endothelial cell, the tunica intima. This is again simple squamous epithelium. And exactly beneath we have the submendothelial layer. This is again always always under the uh, simple sim under any uh, epithelial cell we also always find the lamina propria or the sub epithelial loose connective tissue this is again a range of this is again a content or that contains this is again sorry a structure that contains uh, a loose connective tissue uh, fibroblasts and small small generally generally very very small components of the of the connective tissue typically fibroblasts and, and collagen fibers Exactly beneath, we're going to find the largest layer, the tunica media in the artery, of course. This is, again, an interchange of layers from the elastic lamellae and the smooth muscles. The smooth muscles are the cells that actually are the responsible for the production of these elastic fibers. Now, within the tunica media, we find, of course, elastic fibers, reticular fibers as well, also, as also, um, and also the uh, amorphous ground substance, an ECM generally. Of course, all of, these com all of these components are products of the smooth muscles. Uh, and important to notice that, important to mention that the first uh, layer, the first elastic lamella, is also called internal, uh, internal elastic lamella. This has to do with, the, this is the first layer that we find of the prominent elastic fiber. And of course, in the vessels, always in the big vessels, we also find the external elastic lamella. In the big arteries, we also find the external elastic lamella. And this is again the, the, the outer and the, the last layer of elastic fibers in the tunica media. So the tunic, the internal elastic lamella is the border between the tunica intima and the tunica media. And the border between the tunica intima and the tunica adventitia is the external elastic lamella in the arteries. And lastly, again, we discussed that the tunica adventitia contains fibroblasts, adipocytes, collagen fibers, and vasa vasorum. What is vasa vasorum? Vasa vasorum is the vessels of the vessel. This is exactly what it means. And this is because, of course, in the case of the arteries which, con which cover the, which uh, contain oxygen in the blood, the, all of these cells, again, smooth muscles and all of these cells that we talked about before, all of these cells require nutrients and oxygen as well to survive. No cell can survive without oxygen or nutrients. So it is very easy for these cells to receive the nutrients through diffusion from the fresh blood and full of nutrient blood in the oxygen blood in the lumen. Now, as again, this this happens through diffusion. Again, the problem with diffusion is the distance. Diffusion is a short dis is only pro provides nutrients and oxygen in short distances. So, of course, all the cells that are in the outermost layer that in the, are in the border of the tunica media, the outer layers of the tunica media, and the tunica indentitia, are cells that do not receive enough supply enough supply of oxygen nutrients from the lumen. So, of course, in this case, we have the vasa vasorum, the small capillaries that penetrate the outer layers and provide uh, oxygen and nutrients to these cells in order for them to survive. This is a very nice zoom-in picture that we can actually see very nicely, very clearly, the elastic lamella, the fibers, and also we can see the smooth muscle cells along the lines of these fibers.